Now we will also have some word problems that lead to systems of three equations, three unknowns. And that's okay, that happens. As we read through this, we can see that there's a whole lot of translating stuff going on. But basically what we're looking for is the digits of a three digit number. So as I'm trying to define my variables of x, y, and z, I'm gonna define them as these digits, where x, I'm gonna define as the hundreds digit. I'm gonna define y as the tens digit, and I'm gonna define z as my ones digit. Then I'm gonna go through each sentence where the first one says the sum of the digits is 15. So that's pretty easy to translate as x plus y plus z equals 15. Now as I go to translate the second sentence, we're really just gonna be looking for our normal keywords. The tens place digit, well that's y, is, is means equals, twice the hundreds place digit, 2x. Then I read the next sentence. The ones place digit, that's z, is, that's equals, one less than the hundreds place digit, x minus one. Now this particular problem is really simple to solve because of the fact that we have a y equals and a z equals and both of those are in terms of x. So this would actually be a really easy problem for substitution by saying I can substitute both of these into the first to get x plus, then instead of y putting 2x, instead of z putting x minus 1 equals 15. Now I'm not actually going to do that because I want to show you how we're going to do most of these systems that have three equations, three unknowns. That way you're prepared for anything, not just this special case. What I would suggest doing if I were you in this system of three equations, three unknowns, is to make this look more like the ones that we're familiar with from our homework. So when we dealt with all of our three equation, three unknown systems before, all the x's were lined up, all the y's were lined up, all the z's were lined up, and the numerical value is on the other side. So I would rewrite it in that way. So the first equation was already set up that way, but the second equation, the blue one, I would subtract the 2x over to the left. That leaves me a zero on the right, and there were no z's in that one, so we're just gonna leave the z one blank. Then for the third equation, the red one, I would subtract the x to the other side, giving me negative x plus z equals negative one. So I would look at my system in this way, and that way I can solve it just like I did any other three equation, three unknown system, where I would start off deciding which variable to eliminate and I would probably choose either z or y, doesn't really matter which one, but we're gonna make sure to make that note of which one we do. I say I'm gonna eliminate the z's. That means I'm gonna copy down the equation that doesn't have a z in it already. And then I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this third equation by negative one. That way off to the side in my scrap paper land, I copy down the first equation, and then I multiply by negative one for the other equation, and then add them together. And I get two x plus y equals 16. I copy that down over here. And now this system of two equations, two unknowns, is really easy to solve because the x's are ready for the elimination already. So if we add them together, we get 2y equals 16, or y equals 8. We can then take this value of y equals 8 and plug it back in to figure out our value of x. So 2x plus 8 equals 16. So 2x equals 8, or x equals 4. And now we just need to figure out our z, which we could actually do pretty easily by plugging it in there. 
because I could get negative x plus z equals negative 1. Add the 4 to the other side gets me 3. Now if we go back to the actual question in this case, the question was find the three-digit number where x was my hundreds place, y was my tens, and z was my ones. So that tells me the number here is 483. That's going to actually answer the question in this case, since we were asked what the number was, even though we solve for each digit independently. Now, as far as whether our answer makes sense in this problem or not, it makes sense because each of those digits were actually a digit. If we would have got negative numbers or decimals, we'd say, oh, hold on a second, this is weird. Even if we got a two-digit number, if one of these was 20, that would, wouldn't make sense. X, Y, and Z were each a digit, meaning they were either going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. We did get those values, and so that does make sense, and this is our correct answer.